Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon White version! Last time, we made it through Accumulatown, made it through Route 2, got ourselves the running shoes! Hallelujah! And took down Bianca in a rival battle! This time, we're gonna see the sights in Striatin City, say that five times fast, and see if the gym leader wants a piece of us! However, before we do all that, I want to go into the PC for the very first time and show off this lovely touchscreen interface that, well, I won't say that this game introduced it because it actually didn't. Uh, we're gonna put the little poopster into the um, PC box for reasons that you'll be seeing a little bit later. I'm sorry, you're the only one who doesn't have pickup. There's no sense keeping you around and taking up a slot in our party. So our dog entourage is now one less and it's only gonna get worse with time. Uh, wow, uh, Lillipup and Lillipap are pulling their own weight. I don't know about you, Lillipap, you haven't even found one item yet. Let's see what we got. This is gonna be probably a daily occurrence, I'm pretty sure. Potion, a full heal that restores any sort of stat, um, heals off any sort of status condition. Yes, restores status conditions. <laughs> you gotta make that Pokemon poisoned again, otherwise it's just no good. And another full heal, all right. Nothing super valuable yet, but I'll gladly take it. Now it's time to go around town and hear the absolutely riveting details like where this random lady went to school that she's telling a random kid. If we go around a little bit, uh, you there. Are you looking for the gym leader? He is not here. He could be in the trainer's school. If you want to challenge him, please go find him. All because you're not doing your job, I gotta be the one to go find you if I want to challenge you. It's a way of being lazy and being able to put it forward to the association that you're just making sure only the serious trainers get in. I see through your ruse. Pokemon can be found in dark places too. That's when a Dusk Ball can do the trick. Here's one for you. Fantastic item right here. At nighttime or in areas like caves, this has one of the strongest catch rates of any ball anywhere. It's gonna be a while before we get a chance to get any more of these, but if you already love this item, and you definitely should have, it's better than ever. In Unova, encounter rates have nothing to do with the time of day, so you can force most Pokemon to be fought in a situation that lets you use those. For those of you that are Night Owls, you have no reason not to rely on this item. Striatin's Gym Leader, no matter how often I challenge him, he always uses Pokemon that I don't like. Hmm, could that be a hint, I wonder? Uh, at the site of an old factory, at a place we call the Dream Yard, there's an unusual Pokemon that can make dreams appear. Or, um, grass-type Pokemon are weak against fire-type moves. I know more stuff! Than who? <laughs> than somebody who's never played before, perhaps? Lately, I have a favorite model. Ooh, uh, mind telling me her name? Oh! Uh, I thought you were actually gonna be going in another direction, though, but yes, her name is Elisa, and her Pokemon are strong, too. Uh, you can tell how uh, strong trainers are by the number of gym badges they have. If you're a trainer, you should challenge gym leaders and collect a lot of badges. The GTS! It links the world from the second floor of a Pokemon Center. The full name of GTS is the Global Trade Station. It links the world together, or at least it did up until about four years ago. I'm sorry to run in your parade, buddy. You're kind of one of the last ones to uh, get the memo. Uh, he's telling us to try Pokemon of different types. Quite hard to train six Pokemon at once, so I've heard some trainers focus on training three Pokemon at a time. Not a bad strategy, but personally, for sake of variety and having the spice of life, I quite like having a team of six Pokemon. I know some people do solo runs, I know some people like challenge runs, but I just kind of prefer playing the games the normal old way. That's just me. Going over here, we have grass that is much too tall to be rustling around in. Okay, I know that they're shrubs. There we have a Great Ball. It's stronger than a Pokeball. Not as strong as a Dusk Ball at nighttime, though. And yeah, I do know that they're bushes, though. But come on, when you really get right down to it, bushes are just really tall grass, aren't they? I'm getting philosophical on you. I'm sorry. Uh, got a lot of effigies right here. We have like a oh. P-Dove shrub there, a Pikachu shrub, and then that kind of looked like Suicune's gem up there on the fountain. Technical machines. TM can instantly teach a move to a Pokemon. You can use it over and over with different Pokemon. How cool is that? This is Barnun! One of my favorite changes that any Pokemon game has ever done. The fact that TMs, items that teach Pokemon different moves, we haven't seen any yet, but we will and you can use them as often as you'd like. They are no longer single use. Uh, you're not gonna let us go forward because we don't have gym badges. You gotta be horrible for trade routes, don't you? But yeah, TMs, easily the biggest change. No more having to replay through the entire game to get that one Earthquake TM that you wanna put in your competitive team. No, no more of that crap. You can just straight up use it over and over again. I've heard some people complain being like, oh, you can use TMs as often as you'd like, way to remove all challenge. I'm never playing the series again, but no, I'm sorry. I do not agree with anyone who says that. Honestly, I think it is the best change this side of the Pacific because this region's in 
America, but yeah. Here we are at the trainer school. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I think that's a really stupid complaint. I've actually seen it around more than you'd think. Uh, Blackboard explains Pokemon status changes explained in battle. What do you want to read about? Poison. It no longer damages you on the field. You just lose HP every turn. There's a variation called Badly Poison, which escalates by 1 16th damage every single turn, starting at 1 16th, moving up to 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, etc. Uh, paralysis. It halves your speed, makes it so that you um, have a 25% chance of not moving when it's your turn. Sleep. You will fall asleep and be unable to move for 1 to 4. Five turns at random, maybe six. I know it kind of varies, oh. um, but you know how that works. You have a chance of waking up every turn. Potentially, it can mean nothing. Burn has your attack power. You lose a little bit of HP every turn. Of course, there's no variation like badly poison though. And freeze is just like sleep, except it can only be a secondary chance. No move, just freezes. And it is a 20% chance of being defrosted every turn instead of a number of turns. And some situations, like getting hit by a fire type move, can instantly defrost. You there, buddy? I seem to be saying you there a lot. I need to find a new greeting. Um, red glasses! I'm sure many women find you sexy. When a Pokemon is poisoned, its HP decreases while it is battling. Oh, hey, Blair. Have you come looking for the gym leader? You might say that. He was here talking about Pokemon types until just a few moments ago. Maybe you walked right past him? By the way, Blair, do you have a battle with me? I want to test how important items are in battles. Sure. Well, let's see how effective my items are. Or maybe I should test how well I can battle without items. Anyway, this is an indoor match, so let's battle without getting too rough. Oh, you just want a good excuse in case you lose. Let's do this! He starts off with his Snivy, actually. Wow, he has whatever a starter Pokemon is. In my case, Snivy is level 8 grass type, overgrow for its ability, holding an Oran Berry. When its HP gets low, it'll automatically restore 10 HP. It's a single use item with the moves Tackle, Leer, and Vine Whip. Uh, ooh. I might be in a bad situation, actually. Uh, I guess this would be good a time as any to mention why I haven't caught a secondary team member yet, and it's quite frankly. Catching a team member right now sucks. Like, I don't even mean just that I don't like the particular Pokemon that are available, you know, all three of them that we've seen so far, and I only had good things to say about one of them. Not even counting that, there's not that many trainers that you can battle to get lots of experience, and as a result of that, training up some of these really weak Pokemon and getting them up to snuff with your starter, it takes a long time. For those that don't know, Unova changed how experience points are calculated, where you get exponentially more for beating Pokemon above your level! Ooh, that came at a good time. I might have actually been done for if not for that. Uh, his second Pokemon is Purloin, level 8, Dark type, Limber for its ability so it can't be paralyzed, doesn't mean a damn thing to you. Scratch, Growl, and Assist. But anyway, experience points have changed in how they work. You get exponentially more for beating Pokemon above your level, exponentially less for beating Pokemon below your level. That's always been true to some degree, but it's especially true now. And because that is so greatly emphasized, it's just the wild Pokemon that you're training against are so low leveled after you've beaten all the trainers. I've seen it take hours to get another team member up to the same level as your starter in these beginning areas. And it's just awful and not fun. And that's why I haven't caught anything else yet. So I'd much rather struggle along with Ottawa for a little bit because I think I can handle it. That's that, we grew to level 12. I see. Losing to you means I still have a lot to learn. I didn't take any damage. I've improved since our early days. And not just in a literal sense, also in a figurative sense. So learning to use items well is definitely important then. Okay, Blair, I'll give you these berries. What a gracious allowance you've made, making it so that now we battle on an even playing field after we've already fought. <laughs> uh, put those in the berries case. If you give Pokemon this uh, kind of berry to hold, it will eat it to heal up when its HP goes down in battle. But if you give a Pokemon man-made items like potions to hold, they can't use them. That's the justification for it only healing 10 HP. Well, good luck then. Actually, does it heal 10 HP? Let me make absolutely sure on that. I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, it is just 10 HP. I was thinking of another berry that heals a fixed amount when it, or used to heal a fixed amount, but now it heals a percentage, so just trying to make absolutely sure I wasn't confusing the two. You! I didn't say there that time. Yes, yes, I am a gym leader of this town. You are right. I want to challenge the gym. Well, in that case, what was the first Pokemon you chose? Oshawott, I see. It's weak against grass type Pokemon. I think you need to prepare to face that type. For example, try training your Pokemon in the Dream Yard. Please excuse me now. 
We're not gonna go after him right away. Instead, we are gonna be smart and take his advice. Welcome to the rather soothing dream yard. You know, abandoned factories, incinerators, synonymous with dreams and soothing and calm atmosphere. You know, common sense. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's a little bit strange. Uh, last airy, sending out a purloin as well. I don't have any more complaints about purloin. I kind of got them all out before last time we fought one. So instead of talking about something that I actually don't like and one of the few Pokemon that I have a strong dislike for, let's talk about something actually positive because I like this game and I feel very strongly about that and I want to actually be positive about it. And purloin's not even going to be around to hear it. So sorry for you. Anyway, um... One of my favorite things is, <laughs> there's another Perlin. One of my favorite things to learn about is the geography of the Pokemon world and how it relates to the real world. And I thought Striadin City would be the perfect opportunity to bring this up. Even though we're not in Striadin City anymore. Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> perfect opportunity to bring this up. Situation that we're not even currently in. <laughs> the first three towns that we visited, if I may show them to you on the map, are based on Long Island. I've already said that Unova as a whole is based in the New York City metropolitan area. Striatin City is based off of, and I hope I'm pronouncing this word right, the word Striatin, which means glacial friction, referring to how Long Island was formed geographically. I just find that really interesting, just learning about how it relates to the world, even if we're long overdue for a South American region, and I'd love to see that happen someday. It's still pretty darn cool that North America got another region. My goal is to outperform gym leaders! Can you win against me? Ah, uh, yes, the mighty youngster Joey! <laughs> <laughs> Makes it even better that you're the one saying that. But, uh, Le Gasp, he just sent out a Patrat, not a Ratata. I mean, I guess we could call it Patratata, but yeah, Youngster Joey not using a Ratata. What's up with that? Well, Unova does not have a Ratata in it. There's no Ratata around these parts. Or Pikachu, or Pidgey, or any of those. I have alluded to this before, but Youngster Joey is the most glaring example of it. It is entirely new Pokemon, which is one of the biggest complaints that I hear about, and it's one of the things that I don't understand the hate for, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, also, Ottawa is learning Focus Energy right here, which raises my critical hit chance. I think I'll replace Water Sport with that. Anyway, um, I don't get the complaint. For me, this was the only later Pokemon game that replicated my same feeling I had playing Red and Blue as a child for the first time. Let me explain. Because it's entirely new Pokemon, it forces you to learn everything again. What is what type, what's good, what's bad, having to learn a lot from your battling experiences, because you don't know anything. You can't just rely on Pokemon that you used to know as a crutch. No, you have to learn everything like you did all the way back during your first Pokemon game. Maybe this was your first game, so it did that anyway, but it made this a better game for me, and I think it's very respectable and very admirable that this region has the most new Pokemon of any region, including Kanto, so they give you a lot to work with. But uh, if your nostalgia is not tickled by this, at least you can fall back on knowing that no matter what region he's in and what Pokemon he's forced to have on his team, the fate is always the same for Youngster Joey. He's done. Now, as this little pup goes down, I want you to watch my experience. Yeah. Going back to what I was saying earlier, I'm not gaining hardly any experience. I was leveling up like nuts when we were on par with Pokemon, or at least only like a level or two higher. I'm gaining just nothing. Imagine that when fighting against wild Pokemon after you've beaten all the trainers and trying to raise up something that started at like level four. That's why I haven't chosen to catch a new team member yet. And uh, speaking of not catching a new team member, yes, all I have is Oshawa. Then Pansier could be a big help. Your Oshawa does not do well against grass type Pokemon. Say, do you want this Pansier of mine? Handing me a free Pokemon in a back alley. I totally believe you didn't steal it. I'll take it. It can use fire type, so it makes it hot against grass types. Based on which starter Pokemon you've chosen, you will get a different gift Pokemon from this girl. And it's a very worth your time to come out here and talk to her. To go over what you can get, just like there are three starters, there are three elemental monkeys, and depending on which starter you chose, you'll get the monkey that complements your starter's weakness. Starting off, for those who chose Tepig, you get Pansage. These three Pokemon are not award-winning by any means, but they're the absolute most convenient way of getting through the few battles we have coming up. 
Think of them like a type effectiveness tutorial that you have no good reason not to use for at least a few battles. If you want to keep them on your team long term, that's a completely different story. Pansage's main method of attacking is Vine Whip, which isn't great, but it's something, I guess. The issues are that it's horribly weak until it evolves, it's not going to evolve for a while, and until then, the moves it has are... bad. <laughs> These guys are the first of many stone evolution Pokemon that we'll be seeing on our travels. For the uninitiated, typically if a Pokemon evolves using a stone, its level up moves will either drastically change after evolution or it'll stop learning moves through level up altogether. In this case, I recommend waiting until at least level 22 before evolving because they get better moves of their own type at that point. In this case, Seed Bomb. Moving on, if you started with Oshawott, you get nothing! Good day, sir! Seriously, it might as well be that. Panseer is easily the worst of these three. Just only getting Scratch, Incinerate, Lick, and Fury Swipes until level 22. It's just so incredibly weak on every single possible attacking front. Even though Flame Burst is pretty good when it gets up to that level 22, it's a downright slog to that point because it's so awful. There are many better fire types out there, so don't feel like you have to use this if you want one. Speaking of someone who has used this on their team before, good luck. You wouldn't think that Incinerate being only 5 power less than Vine Whip would be too awful, but I've had it be quad effective with same type attack bonus and still only do about half the opponent's health when they were the same level as Pansir. <sighs> it's just, it's such a painful slog. I don't recommend it for anything beyond the starting stretch, but if you want to go for it, it's not horrible after the beginning. Last up is Panpour, and let me tell you, they took pity on the people who started with Snivy because this is probably the best out of the three. Its starting attack is Water Gun, making it the strongest damage-wise out of the gate for these three. The move it gets at level 22 is Scald, a water-type move with the capability to burn the enemy while also doing damage. It's just a really neat move and not something that you'd immediately expect, but makes total sense for a water type to have, at least in some capacity. There's also not a lot of great water types in Unova, so this has the distinction of not quite being as outclassed as the other two. All in all, if I had to recommend one monkey, it's this monkey. Oh, and you're not limited to just one monkey per playthrough. You can totally catch these guys in the wild later if you want to. By the way, I'm not the only one who thinks Panseer sucks. <laughs> You want to know who else thinks Panseer sucks? The entire country of Japan. I'm not kidding. A few years ago, they held a mock election to determine the most popular Pokemon in the entire world. Panseer's evolved form, Simiseer, got 721st place out of all 721 Pokemon. <laughs> well, there is logically only one thing to do. I am just being a real jerk to my Pokemon right here. Oh, I can't call it 721st place with a space, though, so I think we'll just call you 721st. Uh, I guess, to be fair, you're not 721st right now, but if you grow up, that's what you're growing up into. I'm so sorry, buddy. This is going to be a temporary team member. I don't plan to use Panseer long-term because, well, it, I'd kind of like these battles to not take five years. <laughs> It is helpful early on. It's by f these these monkeys are by far the best secondary team member that you could have right now, and it just really beats having to train up a Pokemon in these early areas. That's yet another reason why I chose not to do that. So, I am gonna hang on to it, but I'm not going to use it right away. I'm gonna be keeping it in the wings and just using it if uh, Ottawa ever runs into trouble. Basically, if Ottawa is not able to solo a fight, then we'll send out 721st here. Uh, you little pap. Lillipap! Oh, Repel! Nice! Makes so I don't run into any wild Pokemon for the fixed number of steps that are lower level than the Pokemon I have out in the lead. Can be quite nice, considering I've only been training up Ottawa up to this point. Now that we've done that, I guess we're pretty good to heal and end things off. I'd say we're pretty darn- Oh, wait a minute! I ran right past clerk number two in this shop, and I haven't explained how Pokemarts work from town to town, so let's do that really quick. I said let's do that really quick, Nurse Joy, please. Actually, this generation canonized this lady's name as Pokemon Center Lady. 
Sorry if you burned your brain being too creative with that title. Oh my gosh, why couldn't they have just called her Joy in this? I mean, Officer Jenny got canonized back in Pokemon Yellow. I don't get it. Hello, welcome, how may I help you? The top clerk will always have the same items in every town. It's not as crappy as it sounds, trust me, there's more to this, but he has the exact same things that we've seen before. Clerk number two, however, is different from town to town. He has a heal ball, which um, will restore Pokemon's HP and status conditions upon catching it. Same rate as a regular Pokeball. He has a bunch of different types of mail, just like the other town, so only one real new thing that matters. We'll grab, yeah, we'll grab two of these. It's not that big of a deal because your Pokemon automatically get transferred to the PC if you already have six in your party like I do, and they get automatically healed from that anyway, so it only really matters early game when you don't have a full party of six, but it is early game and I do have a full party of six and I recommended that you get a full party of six as well, so... Congratulations on being a very irrelevant item before we even had the capability to obtain you. But anyway, we explored the Striden City area, we battled with Charon, got quite a bit stronger, we explored the Dream Yard, and we got the key, or shall I say the Mun Key, to our victory at the gym. Next time on Pokemon Black and White, we are gonna be heading in to Striaton City Gym and seeing if we can't win ourselves a gym badge. See you guys then.